Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnana Shalakaya Chakshurin Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Sreshtam Manamapi Satchi Putra Matra Swarupam Rupam Tasyagajam Urupurim Maturim Goshtavartim Radha Kundam Girivaramaho Radhika Madhava Sham Prapto Yasya Pratita Kripaya Sri Gurum Tamnatosmi Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Ataf Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavangscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghuna Tandvitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parajana Sahitam Krishna Taitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Okay Hare Krishna uh, I will speak in English then in Russian Good idea Guru Maharaj please explain what is the difference between performing bhajan and sadhana uh, Practically they can be taken as the same a bhajan in traditional usage is often used for uh, devotees on the platform of remembrance. Or let's say, bhajan gives more the idea of chanting, worshipping, hearing, reading, etc on the platform of remembrance of the Lord, whereas the term sadhana more gives stress on, it stresses more the element of performance of these activities for this purpose of purification and advancement. Bhajan gives the idea more of worship and sadhana of practice. Next one, then. How can we increase our faith in the Holy Name? These are commonly asked questions. By chanting the Holy Name, by serving the Holy Name, by hearing the glories of the Holy Name, Sangad Sanjayate Kamaha, whatever we contact with, whatever we come in contact with, that awakens our desire. So these, uh, there may be a dozen questions like this. How can we become more sincere? How can we become more dedicated? There, it's all a different presentation of more or less the same question. And the answer is the same pretty much in every case. Apply yourself to the process, the standard process that Srila Prabhupada gave us as uh, based on the teachings of the previous acharyas. And uh, that will automatically give rise to advancement, which uh, advancement in Krishna consciousness can be understood from different perspectives. Faith here has been mentioned. Shadhavanjan hoi bhakti adhikari utam madhyam kanishta shadha anushari. One is uh, eligible for devotional service if one has faith, and one is classified as a topmost intermediate or neophyte devotee according to his level of faith. So, faith, dedication, sincerity, all of these. Naturally, they uh, increase as we go on with the process. Of course, sincerity, uh, that is the key. 
Śrīla Prabhupāda writes that advancement in Krishna consciousness depends on the attitude of the performer. So if we have motives other than to serve Krishna selflessly, then our progress will be much slowed down. But even then, if we go on with the process of Krishna consciousness and associate with advanced devotees, then that will help us even to go beyond the mundane desires. Otherwise, these questions are they're, they're standard questions. If you read Śrīla Prabhupāda's books regularly, you should know You, in the morning class, you mentioned the importance of Vaishnava dress. Is uh, the T-shirt without sleeves adequate Vaishnava dress for men? This kurta without sleeves. Once you get into the details, there could be thousands of questions like this. If I say it's okay with short sleeves, then the next question will be, well, how long is, how long is it? Should, how long is short? Sometimes a little common sense is required. There's a statement we can find in the Charnakya Niti that uh, what use is the scriptures to someone who doesn't have any basic common sense? It's like uh, the, how much useful is a mirror to a blind man? So maybe a sleeveless vest is okay for men if the chopping wood in the forest, maybe not so suitable if they're in some formal ceremony. Even in the secular world, there are distinctions of what is suitable for different situations. If you were invited to meet the premier of Tatarstan, which isn't very likely, you would not likely go with some, just some rubber bathing shoes and shorts and a t-shirt. So similarly in the society of devotees there should be some decorum in the matter of dress. This question sounds like someone wants to get on the case of someone who's wearing a shirt without sleeves. Use me to bash someone. Should we try to develop uh, Vaishnava qualities or those qualities will develop automatically when we develop our devotion? What quality is uh, most important for the devotee? Yes, yasti bhakti bhagavatya kinchana sarvai gunais tatra samasate suraha In the uh, character of persons who have no other desire than to serve Krishna, who have nothing in this world than Krishna, all the godly qualities automatically develop. This is more or less how Śrīla Prabhupāda translated this stanza. A, part, a major part of the devotional process is hearing narrations of the great devotees and, and of the Lord. In doing so, we will hear of their qualities. By hearing of, the, for instance, of the character of Haridash Thakur, we will learn that we should not be disturbed even in great difficulty. While studying Bhagavad Gita, we'll hear Lord Krishna say, for instance, Advaishta Sarava Bhutanam Maitra Karuna Eva Cha uh, that a devotee is without malice to any living being, but rather is friendly and uh, compassionate to all. So automatically we get the inspiration. As part of the hearing process, we get the inspiration and guidance to develop these qualities. So it's all included in the standard devotional process. So it's not that we have to go to a, a special school to learn how to tolerate. It's all included in the devotional process. There is a special school within the devotional service for developing tolerance. It's called 
distributing Srila Prabhupada's books. It's a great school for learning for all qualities. Hmm. Next. In Brahmachari Ashram, devotees perform many practical services and often they have no time or no energy in order to chant together, to have kirtan. Therefore, they chant little. How does it influence their practice of devotional service? Please speak about the importance of congregational chanting of the Holy Name. The importance of the congregational chanting of the Holy Name? That's uh, ABC in terms of the things we should know. Krishna Varnam Twisha Krishnam Sangopangastra Parshadam Yagyai Sankirtana Prayer Yajanti Sumeda Saha. In the age of Kali, Lord Krishna has descended in a non black form, accompanied by his associates and weapons and uh, persons who worship him by the process of sankirtan, congregational chanting, uh, by, by the sacrifice of sankirtan, they, uh, yeah, they're very intelligent. Sankirtan pravartak Sri Krishna Chaitanya Sankirtan Jagge Jai Bhaje Shaidhanya The inaugurator of Sankirtan in this Kali Yuga, in this planet, is Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Those who worship him by the process of Sankirtan are glorious. Shaito Shomeda or Arshab Kalihatajan. What's the next line? Krishna, uh, Krishna Nam. Shaitu Shumeda O Kali Hatajan. Sarva Jagya Hoite Krishna Nama Jagya Sha. No, I'm, I'm getting it right. Okay. Shaitu Shumeda Ar Kubuti Shangsha. Sarva Jagya Hoite Krishna Nama Jagya Sha. That's it. Okay. So, whoever worships Krishna by this process of Sankirtan is very intelligent. Everyone else is of bad intelligence and is entangled in material existence. Of all the different kinds of sacrifices, the very essence of them is chanting the holy names. So, if we don't chant the holy names together in Sankirtan, then we don't get the result of chanting the holy names in Sankirtan. Krishna consciousness is a science. If we follow, we get the result. If we don't, we don't get the result. If you're so busy doing so many what is called practical services that you don't have time for joining in Sankirtan, then some adjustment needs to be made. Of course, it's often seen that devotees have plenty of time for excessive sleeping, talking nonsense, and so on. So, a little time management can be in order also. Okay, one more question, and then we can have a leg stretching session with chanting Hare Krishna. Little kirtan. Can Brahmachari and Mataji? Uh, uh, take a drive in one car or drive in one bus for the long, uh, long uh, Harinams when they need to travel a long distance for book distribution. Not recommend. Not recommended. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. So we're doing it for Sankirtan, yeah, but it's still dangerous. Matra svasra duhitra va. What's the next line? Navi viktasano bhavet balavan indriya gramo vidvang sang apikarshati. One is advised not to sit 
close even to one's mother, sister or daughter because the senses are so strong that even someone who's very learned and knowledgeable can be agitated by them. It seems almost impossible that one could be agitated by sitting close to one's mother, or sister or daughter, but the warning is there. Sometimes the idiom of Shastra is to state something in, in a manner that, that uh, exaggerates the point to bring us, to, to give us the right instruction. Kimutanyai, what to speak of. So the, the idea is if, if it is possible even to be agitated, in, then what to speak of with someone who's not your mother or sister or daughter? Yeah, in these countries, uh, it's just considered normal. It's very obvious coming from India to here. What a difference, culturally. India's a mess, throwing away its culture, but it's still so much better than the West. And I might get criticized for this comment, which I'm about to say, but it seems to me that our devotees from the Western world, if you want to include Russia in that, it's, it's a basic cultural sense is lacking and very difficult for them to imbibe. Srila Prabhupada actually wanted some Western devotees to go to India to imbibe the culture. And so many Russians have gone to live in Mayapur. But then they make their own Russian colony with their own Russian culture. And if you look at the local Bengalis, you may see, well, they don't look very advanced. And in many ways, they may not be. It may be that the Western devotees are more spiritually advanced, but culturally, they're still, it's, it's very hard for them to imbibe that that sense, which uh, it's difficult to put it in words exactly. And it's not that Indian devotees don't fall down into illicit sex, for instance. But um, there is still a, 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 a feeling that this is very wrong for someone who's supposed to be saintly, whereas in the Western world it's just like, you know, it's just, just normal. It's like passing stool or something, it's just like, you know. It's nasty, but everyone does it. And there are other factors also, just like the uh, some uh, sense of the importance of Shastra that's also very much under attack in modern secular India with uh, so much influence of democracy and feminism and psychology and so many things. Just uh, the, the whole basis of that culture is being undermined I am trying to help set up communities in which devotees can live according to Vedic culture. It's not easy even in India, but it's, uh, it seems to be easier than outside India. I had a desire that devotees can come and we can make places where devotees can come and stay a few years and imbibe that culture. But very few devotees are able to stay very long 
living among Indians, even if the devotees are very good devotees, but uh, the cultural jump seems to be too much. That was true even when Srila Prabhupada was here. He used to bring so many devotees from the West to India, but very few stayed. It's not essential to be in India to be Krishna conscious. Obviously, this festival is the obvious evidence of that. But if we are to present Krishna consciousness as a viable alternative to the demoniac society which is spoiling everyone's life, then we're really going to have to live and demonstrate a better culture. Wearing Vaishnav dress is part of it. It's not the essence of it. It's symbolic, as I was giving the example this morning, that if you are enrolled in a military academy, you're expected to wear a certain kind of uniform uh, and hairstyle also. You can't have long, straggling hair if you're in a military academy. So the uniform helps to uh, helps us to helps the members of that academy to self-identify with the role that they're being trained to fulfill. But the uniform in and of itself doesn't make a soldier. Anyone can put on the uniform, but it doesn't make you a soldier. And this it requires a lot of training. And a whole state of mind which is different to non-soldiers. So similarly, uh, we require, as Srila Prabhupada said, a class of brahmanas who can lead human society by their character uh, as a prerequisite for establishing varnashram dharma as the alternative to the misguided ideas of various ideologists. Up to the present, we haven't taken, as a movement, we haven't taken this very seriously. It's generally considered that if you just, if you've been around enough time and you pass one or two exams, then you can be a brahmana. Well, there should be some knowledge, Shastric knowledge, that's for sure. But uh, that is not all. There's a lot more to it. Anyway, Hare Krishna. Uh, so there can be a little break here, and you can all engage in Harinam Sankirtan. Hare Krishna. I'd like to dance and jump more, but pain in the legs. I can chant and dance more, but then I'll be out of action for more days. So you should do more jump, jumping and dancing on my behalf. As long as you have strength in the body, dance in Krishna Kirtan. Okay, more questions. Everything will be resolved. All these questions, but everything will be resolved by Kirtan. Shadana Shadya Shadana Tatta Jaiki Chu Shokal Hari Nama Shankirtane Milibe Shokal. All the different truths and understandings about the goal of life and how to attain it are all. They all come by Harinam Sankirtan. Hmm. We know that Srila Prabhupada asked his Guru Maharaj only one question. How can I serve you? Could you please speak more, elaborate? How can we deeply please you? I'm a servant of Srila Prabhupada's mission. So you serve Srila Prabhupada's mission and you'll serve me. So if you serve Srila Prabhupada's mission, I'll be very happy. There are many ways to serve Srila Prabhupada's mission. They are summarized in two considerations. 
Janma Sharta Kari Koro Para Upaka. Make your life successful by Krishna consciousness and do good for others by Krishna consciousness. How can we uh, uh, accept your instructions and strictly follow them without becoming fanatics? How can we develop mercy to others? How can we be tolerant to other God brothers and to disciples of other spiritual masters? How can we cooperate with others? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's a whole bunch of. Let's take one at a time. Yes. How can we accept? How, okay, do the first one, mm -hmm. one at a time. How can we accept your instructions and strictly follow them without becoming fanatics? Well, what does Srila Prabhupada say about this? It's a well-known statement. Anyone? Hmm? Utility is the principle. Uh, religion minus philosophy is sentimentalism or sometimes fanaticism. So fanaticism means when you follow without religion, w without knowledge and understanding. So there's the answer. One has to cultivate knowledge and understanding. The basic process of Krishna consciousness might appear to uh, inimical outsiders to be fanaticism, to follow so many rules and to fully dedicate oneself to Krishna will be seen by many people as fanaticism. It's a matter of where you draw the line. Even our basic principles are seen as too strict by many people. Rising early in the morning is seen as fanatical by some people. And sometimes even within the society of devotees, to follow strictly is labeled as fanaticism. But if you don't follow these things, then you don't make any advancement. So if we want to avoid being called fanatics altogether, then we shouldn't try to be Krishna conscious. The problem with that is that you go to hell and you don't go back to Godhead. And the more strictly we follow, the better the result we get. As uh, Jayadveta Swami once said in a class in Mayapur when he was challenged on this point, that no one ever fell down by strictly following, but so many fell down by not strictly following. But again, there has to be knowledge and understanding. Mm -hmm. Then what's the next question? Mm -hmm. How can we develop mercy to other devotees? How can we be tolerant, tolerant to other disciples and other How devotees? How can we develop mercy towards other devotees? Mm -hmm. Well, that presumes we're in a better position than them. Mercy flows downwards. So if we can say, how do we develop mercy it's almost, to other devotees, it's almost like saying, how can I think myself better than other devotees? Of course, it is the duty of those who are more developed in Krishna consciousness to help those who are less developed. And that is a natural function of someone who is advancing in Krishna consciousness. Uh, as far as I know, there are no schools for teaching mothers how to love their children. It's a natural sentiment. So if one's actually advancing in Krishna consciousness, he'll want to help those who are newly coming, and even those who are not new but are struggling or facing some unexpected challenges or whatever. If we're thinking how to develop mercy, then we probably need to work more on our own selves. It's a premature question. Then, what's the next? Mm -hmm. Also, the last one was how to uh, be tolerant to the disciples of other gurus and how to cooperate. Hmm. How to be tolerant in Vaishnava society. Yeah, it's a, it's a very important question, otherwise there is no society. Otherwise we're all on our own. 
Uh, learning to develop tolerance. Before we think about learning to develop tolerance, we should learn the parameters of tolerance. Should we tolerate murder? Should we tolerate rape? Well, the answer to that, it's an ext extreme example where the answer is obviously no. There are certain things which are not tolerable in civilized society. So similarly, in, in Vaishnava society, there are some things which are tolerable and some things which should not be tolerated. And misunderstanding of this can cause uh, many problems in Vaishnava society. For instance, if someone is being offensive to Srila Prabhupada, and we tolerate it in the name of, well, we have to be tolerant, then that will, allowing that will pollute the whole Vaishnava society. So before we ask how we can tolerate, we should know what is tolerable and what isn't. However, in our um, Vaishnava society, there are various opinions about where lines should be drawn, which can lead to uh, discord. In some cases, we may want to respect devotees, but not associate thickly with them. Otherwise, tolerance, uh, someone has some idiosyncrasy, uh, we may not make a big fuss about that. Sorry. Idiosyncrasy? You don't, know, you don't have that in Russian? It means some unusual characteristic, which is not harmful, but it's unusual. Eccentric. Symptom mm -hmm. of eccentricity. Mm -hmm. we may not well, it's, yeah, eccentricity is a bit more than idiosyncrasy. Mm, okay. It's not a big deal if other... Well, it shouldn't be a big deal, mm -hmm. but sometimes people may make a big deal of it. There must be some word for that in Russian. You should you have yes. your phone here and look it up. <laughs> yes, yes. Idiosyncrasy, is, there is a word, but I forgot. It must be, yeah. Mm -hmm. But if it's something, there may, there may be something which uh, you may tolerate for some, and then you may want to say something at some point. To give literally a gross example, uh, there's a devotee who passes stool and just squirts it everywhere and doesn't clean up properly afterwards so that when you go in the bathroom after him, there's all stools spattered here and there. So it might be something you say to him, look, Prabhu, it, it, it would be better if you cleaned up afterwards. After all, I'm not a devotee, but other people using this bathroom are devotees, and you don't want to subject them to that. And, but sometimes you find devotees, I mean, they, they have like that idiosyncrasy, maybe it's just, I don't know why, just, uh, just, and uh, it seems very difficult for them to, in, in other ways they may be very good devotees, but it's like some habit or something that they just, they don't change, and then, what, then what to do, then you could ask them, please let me know whenever you're passing stool and I'll go in and clean up after you. What does he say? He said he will agree, that devotee will agree with that proposal. Uh, you don't know, Miss. Human psychology is very complex. Hard to work out. We have any psychologists here? Oh yeah, we have. Ananga Manjari is an ex-psychologist, right? Are you a psychologist too? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I didn't realize. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Dangerous people. 
they look at you, when they look at you, they just try to <coughs> calculate everything about you. They, if you. If they see you go like this, they say, well, that's because in his childhood... <sighs> Any other questions? Sorry, I don't... I don't want to be intolerant of psychologists. It's just an idiosyncrasy of mine that I'm not that very tolerant of them, generally. So maybe you could give me some psychological advice how to overcome that. Or maybe you could just tolerate me. Because you don't have to be a psychologist to know that it's very difficult to change old people. So I, I have a little uh, excuse now. I'm beginning to be... I'm old, right? So you can get away with many things when you're old. Now I can really be fanatical. Ha ha ha! <laughs> Next question. There is a similar question. Many of your instructions are very uncompromised uh, uh, towards cultural aspects in Krishna consciousness. Most of your disciples create conflicts with other devotees who are not so mature and knowledgeable in Vedic culture but who still accept Srila Prabhupada with all the heart. So how can your followers um, cooperate with other devotees? This is an example of a well-formulated question. The, we just had the question, how can we be tolerant and not be fanatical in, in association of, other, of disciples of other gurus? But this present question is much more specifically formulated. So we're getting to the heart of the problem here, or the heart of the issue, let's say. Well, this very question, to me, again underlines the need for what Srila Prabhupada stressed so much of Varnashram Dharma being established. In Vedic culture, the uh, brahmanas very strictly follow so many rules. Those who don't follow very strictly are shudras. Devotees are transcendental to varnashram designations because they're devotees. But at the same time, we all have our material conditioning. Uh, Srila Prabhupada especially wanted to establish a keda of brahmanas to give the lead in Varnashram society. In Vedic society, in a town, brahmanas, kshatriyas, vaishyas, and shudras will live in separate quarters, different parts of the town, because they have different levels of strictness in their following, so it's better that they're all separated. And those who don't follow at all, they live outside the town or village, and they're the chandalas and lechers and so on. So we should uh, first see what our, what is the aim of our Vaishnav society. First we have to make a society, a, a, a cater of brahmanas, we should try to engage everyone in chanting Hare Krishna. But the uh, differences in, follow, in following, in practice, in knowledge, in purity of behavior, that should be recognized also. Someone who is following strictly might not try to force someone who is not committed to that, to do so. But at the same time, those who do not follow very strictly shouldn't uh, try to force those who are following strictly not to follow strictly. And we shouldn't say that, well, it's all just the same. 
There is a difference, for instance, in those who regularly, daily, rise early and have a sadhana program, and those who don't. There's a difference between those who are strict in their eating habits and only take food which is properly prepared and offered to Krishna and those who don't. And failure to recognize this uh, endangers the Vaishnava society of uh, becoming filled with various upper sampradayic influences. So what's the question exactly? You can say it again. Your disciples come in conflict with other devotees? Yeah, yeah so un unless, they, unless these lines are clearly demarcated, then there will be conflict. Someone buys, buys some bread from the shop and offers you, ah, oh, yes, I made some sandwich for you, prasadam. And you say, well, that's bought from the shop, isn't it? Well, that can't be properly considered prasadam. And you say, oh, you see, you're being offensive, you're being fanatical. Uh, so these, there's a basic difference in understanding of what we're doing in Krishna consciousness. How is this to be resolved? What is the answer? Then we have to go to Guru, Sadhu and Shastra. It's clearly demarcated in Shastra what is offerable to Krishna and what isn't. So if you say, I bought the bread from the shop with love and I offered it with love, and therefore it's prasadam, well that's not a, that is not acceptable because that's not within the parameters given by Guru, Sadhu and Shastra. So uh, it appears that Conflict in, in such circumstances is inevitable. And the example I gave is something which you may have personal experience of or have heard about because it seems to be quite common. Is it here? This idea that you can just buy something from a shop and you offer it and it's all prasadam. Yeah, this idea is here also. Hmm. Everywhere. So, so there's going to be, if you want, see what I'm saying, I'm just trying to say what Srila Prabhupada said, that's all. And others will also say, yeah, we're also following then you have to see, then you have to examine what did he actually say and what is the basis on which he said it. Bishoyer onna kaile molin hoimon. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that if you eat the food of sense enjoyers, then your mind becomes polluted. And then there will be counter arguments. Well, I offered it with love. But actually, if you offer with love, then you offer what the, you offer to a per, if you love someone, then you offer them something that they want, not what you think they should want. So through Guru, Sadhu and Shastra, Krishna lets it be known to us what he wants. Don't, uh, don't endanger your own spiritual life by being dragged down to a platform which you know isn't right. It's not easy to be a devotee of Krishna. It may be increasingly difficult, even within the society of devotees, to follow even the basic things that Srila Prabhupada gave us. Here, how about this? I'll tell you something. I think it was less than two years ago that there was a referendum in Ireland on whether or not abortion should be allowed. Up to that time, abortion was illegal in Ireland. And so I am told by a devotee who was living there, there were quite a few initiated devotees, some of them had been initiated devotees for many years, 
who were propagating that we should vote pro-abortion. That's pretty bad. 